I believe all children should grow up feeling that they are the center of the universe. When my life led me here to Tanzania, I couldn't help but notice all of these kids living on the street, kids who were the center of nobody's universe, kids who had no future except for violence and starvation. And so I thought long and hard about what to do. My name is India Howell, and I grew up on the East Coast of the United States, outside of New York City. It's been a real interesting ride, so come on in. Our children's village is home to 69 kids that were living at risk, kids who had been orphaned, kids who very likely would have either died or gone to a life on the streets. Somebody asked me early on if we would be allowing adoption, and my immediate response was no. I tell these kids the minute they arrive, you are safe, you're part of a family now. You're never going to have to feel unwanted again. You're home. I can't say that to a kid if there's a chance that they might be adopted. And so we knew from the first that this, this is forever. Family is forever. Uh, my name is Peter Leon Massey, and my duty here is ranges from uh, medical issues, uh, microfinance, uh, management office works, and dealing with more than 100 employees. It's just, it just cuts across almost everything <laughs> that we do every day here. Uh, my name is Shanga Beecher. I work as a pediatric nurse practitioner here at the Rift Valley Children's Village. My name is Nick Beecher. I'm the Education Director here at Rift Valley Children's Village, working in partnership with Gitigi Primary School. My name is Christy Slice. I deal with the volunteers that come through. We have about a hundred a year. Short term, three weeks, long term, up to a year. The volunteers from the West. They come and go. The mamas are the driving force in those households. All of the house mothers that are permanently there are Tanzanian. They're really getting this fabulous mix of influence and mentoring that I actually think all children would benefit from. For instance, we just had a group in here that came from the U.S. and they spent the day working with the kids. Uh, one group learned how to be a DJ. I'm doing the DJ workshop and I'm actually really impressed with just the aptitude of these kids like they're really kicking it up and they they love it and then there was a group that was teaching dance we also have a lot of special things happening with different volunteers that come in. We have one volunteer here right now who's an artist. And so the other day she got a bunch of old scrap wood from us and taught a bunch of kids how to paint. And they actually painted incredible things that I want to hang up in the office. With all of these different programs going on, the kids get an even richer experience because they get to try all different things. I really believe that our kids should go to the local government school because I wanted them to grow up as part of a community. Unfortunately, the school was so poor and they had, I think, six or seven teachers, 450 students. They didn't even have chalk. They didn't have pencils. They didn't have textbooks. Three years ago, we undertook a contract with the district education office of Karatu to manage the school and we both have the same agenda. We want all of the kids from this area to get the best primary education they can. At the school, we've got 40 kids max in the classroom instead of 80. Our kids in the community are getting better educated and therefore having a better chance to break out of this poverty. All the different projects that India and Rift Valley Children's Fund have started has been in response to a problem they've seen in the community. One of the early challenges that we had to face was medical care. I wanted my kids to have not just the best of the best of education and the best of the best of home, I wanted them to have the best medical care that could possibly be had in Tanzania. Enter Dr. Frank Artris and his wife Susan. We come up here to the Rift Valley Children's Village two days every two weeks. Frank and his team come up with a lab tech, a doctor, a nurse, and we offer free medical care to the women and children and elderly of this area. We've had some pretty scary experiences that came out with a very happy ending that would not have had a happy ending without these two.
what I'm doing doesn't work if my kids can't get medical care. And it's not just about the kids that live here, it's about the whole community becoming healthy. Once you leave the gate, you realize that it's not rift and the community, it's the community. You really do notice that there's their changes are happening beyond the gate. Our biggest push now, and I think forever, is sponsors. The sponsorship program, which we have designed so that every kid will have several sponsors, has become such an important part of life for these kids. And because as our kids are getting older, they need to go off to secondary school, which is expensive. And we have to do that. There's no point in raising kids and just taking them through seventh grade. They have to finish out and get the education they need in order to get good jobs and become productive adults. This program is going to help change in the community because we have kids who live here. And those kids, they are all going to go to, to the secondary school and maybe even go to college. And sometimes vocational training, which they are going to bring it back to this community. Without donors, we would have none of these buildings. Our kids would not have education. It's so incredibly important. And you know, as we bring in more kids into our program, obviously we need more, more donors and more sponsorship to send them off to secondary school. These kids today are living in a family. They're not orphans anymore. They are all a part of a big family, the Rift Valley Children's Village family, and they know it. Somebody's told me that one of the worst things about being an orphan is that you have no history. You don't have the family photo albums. You can't go to your mom's house and see all this stuff. So right off the bat, we started archiving photos. With, and every year we make like a yearbook, like the family photo album that's got everyone. But we're also, we make folders of all the kids so that when you finish form six and you're ready to go out in the world and have your own apartment, you're gonna have your own photo album like your mom would have made you a baby book. <laughs> this is my first. When I designed the Children's Village, I really had this vision that each of these individual self-contained houses would be one family. Uh, what I have found over time, and I learned it from my kids really, is they certainly see themselves as coming from Kieran House or Serengeti House, but they really think of this as one big family. What's so wonderful to see is that the adults that work here feel very much the same way. You just have to be part of the family. And, you know, I'm like the big brother here. <laughs> Today. This is not a job for me. This is just amazing. And now I'm going to cry. <laughs>